Ms. Gamble, are you there, please? Make sure you're unmuted. We'll give her a minute. Take your time. She's the only other live speaker we have this evening, Linda. Yes, the other one is not connected. I saw something mentioned in chat. My name is Richard Rivera, standing for Randolph of our state chapter, who, who pre read a public comment regarding the removal of college education for police houses, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, well, as we're waiting on Mrs. Gamber. Oh, okay. Hang she on, on a minute. She's still muted. All right. We're going to allow Richard to speak unless anybody objects in, in okay. lieu of Randolph. Um, Richard, you have up to five minutes. And then if Ms. Gambler comes on, oh, she's on now. All right. Before you go, Richard, Katie, can you unmute yourself now? The little microphone in the bottom left hand of your screen, of your Zoom screen. If you could click on that, that will unmute you. Or star six, if you're just on the phone. All right, um, while we're waiting, there we go, Katie. Hello? <laughs> yeah, that worked, okay. Go ahead, Katie, you have uh, up to three minutes, go ahead. Okay, my question is, I know there's an ordinance that says that Anybody can park in a handicapped spot as long as they have a placard or a handicapped license plate, okay? But what happens to the person who has a sign outside their home? This is a residential area. They leave and they go wherever they have to go, like to a doctor's appointment, grocery shop, or something, and they come back and their parking space is taken legally by according to the ordinance, with somebody with a placard or a handicapped license plate. Okay. Now, that person has found a parking space five blocks away from their house, but they can't get back home because they're not capable of walking that distance. So now they're in a situation where they have to either stay in their car overnight or attempt to walk home or it could be a person in a wheelchair, too, trying to get home and can't make it and collapse on the street because they can't go any further. Now they're, now they're vulnerable to people who will rob them, beat them, probably even kill them. So how do we solve this problem that allows other people to use other people's parking spaces that was that they had all the paperwork done, the doctors I was signed everything in that, they got their legal handicap sign, but then they can't use it because somebody else is using it. All right, Katie. Now, um, did we call the police to come and get us and take us home? So Katie, we don't respond to questions at this time. There will be an opportunity for council members to comment at the end of the public comment session. I would, uh, I, I would ask you to stay on to see if there are any comments. I would also ask you to speak with our city clerk uh, in the near future by calling the city council office and she can give you more details. But if you hang on, somebody might have a comment when, when we're done with public comment, okay? Yes, yeah, you can call your city clerk. I'm sorry, yeah, I was just gonna say real quick that if uh, she reaches out to the city clerk's office, I can get her the information she needs. All right, Katie, did you hear that? Well, if you can reach out to the city clerk. Um, Again? Because I did call them and she didn't have an answer for me yet. Well, she may not have the answer you want, but she will have an answer, unfortunately. So let, let us wait to the end of the comment period to see if we have any comments. We know it's a sensitive subject and uh, it's a tough one for us to position on, but let, let us get through comments okay. and we'll, we'll make a comment. Uh, any uh, Richard's now on, and uh, anybody have any objections to Richard speaking on behalf of? Uh, oh Jesus, let me pull it up. On behalf of Randolph, I don't have any objections. So anybody else? All right, Richard. Uh, good evening, sir. You, you do have up to five minutes on this topic, and uh, welcome, sir. Thank you for having me. Did, are you able to hear me? Yes. Well, thank you all. And uh, we really appreciate uh, these open forums where people get to talk to their elected officials on things that affect them. And I, I reviewed past minutes and agendas 
uh, from your meetings and, and some of them have been very lively debate and uh, it's, it's really nice to see people participating in the process. My name is Richard Rivera and I'm the co-founder of the National Coalition of Latino Officers. We are um, predominantly based on the East Coast and uh, we co-founded the organization in 2012 after seeing a need uh, for more representation in settings no different than this, as well as internally at police departments uh, for uh, women and officers of color in order to have uh, the ability to discuss freely their work situations and also most importantly, to bridge the gap between policing and community. Now more than ever in the history of, of this great nation, we see that um, such dialogue is needed. So I appreciate your efforts in moving towards uh, those conversations as, as well as including uh, com comments and, and uh, conversations like the ones we're having now. So our organization is an umbrella of other organizations that could be local state chapters, as is the case here with the Pennsylvania Latino Officers Association, which reached out to us to discuss this matter. We, we are fact-based in our comments. When we're discussing issues, we share data, we share studies, we share public comment with officials. We, we don't deal with hyperbole. We don't deal with anecdotal issues, uh, but we deal with more concrete facts. And we'd like to assist you in your efforts when you're reviewing the police department and what it's seeking to do um, by removing the college uh, requirements. What we'd like to see are any studies or trends that the police chief could point out to that this opens the door for minorities. I could tell you as a, a Puerto Rican Irishman that I've seen it on both sides in both of my communities that I've grew, grown up in and, and loved and cherished on how um, it hurts to be one or the other because of uh, um, projected perceptions, et cetera. I, I was a police officer, I'm retired now, and now I'm a police director. And between Friday and today, the agency that I run has interviewed eight candidates. Uh, all of them, all of them with the exception of one has college credits. And I knew when I was getting into a law enforcement career more than 30 years ago that the job that I sought required college credits. And I put myself through college, paying my way. I knew what the standard was. I knew how high the bar was. And I, I went to school full time while being police officer and then ultimately got my master's degree. So while some communities might appreciate it and we were actively involved and engaged in these conversations over 20 years ago with the New Jersey State Police, which had college requirements and substituted those with other life and work experiences, what you're doing to the officers within your police department that have already passed that bar, that threshold, understanding what they needed to get ahead and to be competitive is removed those incentives to better themselves and develop professionally. So I look forward to any questions and comments on this topic. Uh, you should all have a copy of our uh, press release that was issued earlier regarding this very issue. And I hope that we could discuss the matter further with the police chief and understand what his rationale was in removing the college requirement, particularly when it involves in-service personnel. Uh, and we, we, hope, we hope dearly that this isn't uh, to benefit a small group of individuals internally and that this is more of a fair and equitable process. And I thank you for your time. Okay, uh, Richard, thank you for your comments. Um, Linda, we have uh, one um, written comment to be uh, read on. And that was from Ms. Guerrero and that was distributed. All right, do you have a problem reading that for us? No, her remaining questions were, I would like to know how much public, public involvement was given. I would like to know if anyone from council has taken the time to talk with the ones who are panhandling in the downtown. I would like to know why we are now pushing to get the bums off the street. I would like to express that this is another form of casket system. We are better than our neighborhoods. I have a million ideas on how we can make writing safe and booming with business you, business you have not known. What do I do? What do I do to have to sit at the table? Please answer my questions. I have seen and heard for myself how council handles the public. Your positions are ones you were voted into. 
we are in the cycle of change. Let's be the first to show the city and the world that we love our community. And then she also questions the ordinances in place for abandoned buildings. And she notes a building on Peach Street, which is falling apart as she's typing this email. Um, she says landlords who have buildings which they are using for tax purposes should be held accountable, not the small homeowner who the city is trying to bully into leaving the area because they are taking a stand against injustice that is happening to city residents. What is on the agenda for these buildings and when will we hear about it? All right, that's it. Yes. Okay, council, um, we've had uh, four public speakers. This is a chance for very, very brief comments uh, in response to any of those speakers. If somebody has the need to do so. Um, and then again, at the end of the meeting, there's always a window as well. I will, uh, and if somebody does respond, we don't need to repeat the response just to keep this brief. Um, who has a, any response at this time? Okay, if there's no response at this time, um, I will I simply respond to Ms. Gambler that um, I, I ask that uh, you, you do speak to uh, Linda um, tomorrow, give her a call and she will connect you with the chief to get the appropriate information. Regarding handicap parking, it's a sensitive issue. Um, it's not easy for us to manage it. We try to be fair, but we, the city doesn't have the ability to give you exclusive rights to a parking spot, which does pose problems in some cases, unfortunately. So uh, we hope people are willing to work it out. If there's a need for additional space on the block, um, because there are other handicapped residents, then that is something that should be pursued um, so that there's enough spaces for those people. I've always said that I don't mind walking five blocks if it, if it accommodates those who really need parking. So that's how we have to be good neighbors in the city. Uh, are there any other comments before I move on? Johanny? Well, first, just I just always want to thank the speakers because this is the venue for uh, community input and for them to voice their concerns. Um, I did, a quick question, uh, Mr. Rivera mentioned a press release. Where where would we find that? I'm sorry, which press release were you referring to, Johanny? Mr. Rivera in his comments mentioned uh, something about a press release. I believe he said it was emailed to us okay. today. Did anybody receive that? It was last week. Last week. Linda, mm -hmm. will you forward that on to everybody again so we have a point of reference? I will do my best to find it. Okay. Is that good, Johanny? Thank you. Yep. All right, guys. Um, we will move on then. If there's no additional... Marcia, go ahead. Yeah. And Jess, I first of all want to thank the speakers and they brought up a lot of good points. Uh, certainly want to be rereading uh, from, uh, I don't know what his uh, title is, uh, Rivera, but I do want to be able to see what his point of view is because I think it's very important in our decision making. Also uh, regarding the perception of the panhandling ordinance, indeed what the speaker wanted to see happen, if you look at the amended version of it, which is available on the city website, it does include diversion programs. So the goal is not to be punitive. The goal is to be able to help build the bridge for those individuals who may have a multitude of different problems and direct them to the appropriate resources together with a community service component. So that the most important thing is that jail is not included. So we do not want to be able to create a chaos system. We want to be able to deal with the problem in a compassionate way. Thank you. Okay, um, Donna. And I would just, I would just echo what Marsh has been saying. And also, you know, so people understand there is a huge difference between aggressive panhandling and people who are homeless. There's a clear, clear differentiation of that. And we want to help everyone. I know our homeless coalition and different entities work really hard to help the folks and, and get them into, into some kind of housing and, and, and get them hopefully on a path to sustainability in their own house, their own apartments or housing units somewhere. Um, but I don't think you can lump together homeless and aggressive panhandlers. I think um, perhaps the panhandlers are homeless, perhaps they aren't, we don't know. And panhandlers versus aggressive panhandlers are two different groups as well. So, 
you know, everyone has, I believe, with this ordinance, tried very hard to be fair and to be helpful to people who are down on their luck. And that's how we uh, hopefully will go forward in, in working with this and giving, giving the police and giving others the tools they need to help these folks and make the city a better city. So I agree with Marsha, it is not a cast system. It is a helping hand to move everyone into a direction where they their lives will be better. So those are my comments. Okay, Donna, thank you. Um, I believe Chief, did you have a comment, please? Yeah, just real quick. Um, I just want to point out, we reached out to Mr. Rivera's organization three times, uh, the Chiefs of Police Office, to have a discussion about their concerns, and they refused to have any conversation with us. Um, also, the other uh, point is that college is not required for hires for the running police department. Um, he put that in the comments there over in the chat. Um, we're not removing any requirements for college for hires or promotion. Um, you don't require uh, any college for promotion or hiring and running police department. So I just wanted to clarify those two points because they were incorrect. All right. Any additional comments at this time, guys? Um, otherwise, we're going to move on to the agenda. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, let me move forward in the agenda. Our next item um, is the approval of our agenda and minutes. This will include the minutes from our April 12th regular meeting and approving the summations of discussion from the April 12th and April 19th Committee of the Whole and Nominations and Appointments Committee meetings. We, we also, as part of our approval of our agenda and minutes, we also do approve our consent agenda legislation. There are just two items tonight. One is award of contract for bituminous materials and asphalt cement for the Public Works Department to New Enterprise Stone and Lime Company in Winfield, PA for the price of $45,000, the actual expenditure may be greater or less than the estimate estimate based upon the need of the materials. And the next item under the consent agenda is an award of contract to LFT engineering consultant to McCormick Taylor Extra PA, Exton PA as follows. Uh, it's $210,000 a year for this year, next year, and in 2023 for the total price of $630,000 for paving, road construction, road maintenance, et cetera. So that is our agenda and our uh, consent agenda items. Um, if there is no uh, dissent, uh, they will stand as approved. Is anybody against the approval of the uh, agenda in the minutes and the consent agenda items? All right, if not, they stand as approved. Uh, we will move on to the administrative report. Uh, I didn't get a chance to mention the mayor's uh, feeling a little uh, under the weather this evening. We have, and uh, Abe is on vacation. So we have uh, Frank, Mr. Frank uh, Dombowski here with us this evening to give us the administrative report. Uh, Frank, good evening, sir. Good evening, uh, Council President, members of Council, and uh, the viewing public. I'll be providing uh, some of the highlights from this evening's administrative report. On April 6th, Mayor Eddie Moran and city staff welcomed State DCD Secretary Davin and members of his team. Top topics discussed include expansion of affordable housing initiatives, small business owner programs, and manufacturing and industry opportunities. Mayor Moran recently accepted a formal invitation to join the U.S. Water Alliance, which is part of the Water Equity Network. The Water Equity Network is a national network that shares insights and best practices, including COVID-19 response strategies. It also engages in uh, cross-city coaching, mentoring, and contributes to advancing equitable water management locally and nationally for equitable water future. The Community Development Department is pleased to report that residential renovations, particularly in the city's historic districts, have increased by 30% compared to this time last year. This increase is an early indicator that there's increased interest in the city's residential market. The property maintenance division will be mailing housing bills this week to rental property owners. After numerous delays in achieving an acceptable document through the lockbox due to scan line issues, we've opted to have the payments mailed in house for processing by the Citizen Service Center and the Treasury to avoid further delay. The Finance Department's Grants Division submitted uh, a RAC P application for resubmission of the 9th and Marion Fire Station development project on March 15th. This request is for about $4 million. 
also recently prepared and submitted was DCED Keystone Communities Program grant application for 800 block of Penn. The Reading Public Library has received a $20,000 grant from the STEM programming from the Home for Orphans of Odd Fellows. This is a year two of a five-year $100,000 grant cycle. The Reading Police Department conducted Operation Ceasefire in various states. On the seven, March 17th detail, there were uh, 11 probation parole violation arrests, 14 misdemeanor arrests, four felony arrests, 47 traffic stops, nine subject stops, 25 traffic citations, and two firearm seizures. On March 25th detail, four more people or persons were arrested and there was a firearm seizure. On the 26th of March, there was additional arrests and 10 more firearms that were seized. Public Works, Public Works has increased pothole remediation efforts due to the change of weather. The warmer weather has also allowed crews to increase cleaning and clearing efforts of city parks and trails in preparation for increased spring and summer usage and Public Works has restored all basketball rims to the playgrounds. On Saturday, the city had one of its largest cleanup efforts known as a Great American Cleanup. Um, and the Reading P uh, Police Department also held this gun buyback event, which resulted in, in uh, receiving 91 firearms. We'll have more details of these both events in our next administrative report. Uh, that concludes uh, the administrative report. Okay, thank you, uh, Frank. Uh, council members, any uh, comments or questions uh, for Frank this evening? Go ahead, Donna. Frank, I wanna thank you very, very much for always being available and making yourself available at these meetings. Your knowledge of what is going on in the city and your ability to update us is highly appreciated. It is not always something that we expect to come from the chief of staff, but I can't, I, I say on behalf of myself and I believe my constituents, we really thank you. And again, we appreciate you're always making sure that you're here. I know you face a lot of challenges and it means the world to us. Your knowledge, your experience and your ability to update us. So thank you very much, Frank. Thank you. Additional comments or questions for Frank? Yeah. Okay, thank you, Frank, for the report. We um, are gonna move on to the uh, City, uh, the report from the city auditor, and we're going to welcome uh, Maria. Maria, good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Council President. Uh, the first line item on my report is the, real, the revenue on the real estate transfer tax. During the month of March 2021, the city collected $1,178,885.61 in revenue on the real estate transfer tax and the first quarter of the current year ended with a strong revenue balance of a total of $2,238,038.54 of 48% on total amount budgeted. For the first quarter of 2021, there has been a total of 619 transactions for real estate conflict tax. Out of this total, 523 transactions were taxable and 96 were not taxable transactions. As of March 31st, 2021, the city collected $731,939.25 for properties sold for more than half a million dollars threshold. The table below listing all the property uh, that has been sold for uh, four and a half a million dollar threshold. During the month of March, the Auditor General contacted the City Auditor Office in regards to the state liquor fuels order for the fiscal year 2019 and 2020. All the information requested to the City Auditor Office has been provided to Mr. Stappi, who is the Auditor Field Supervisor. After the audits are completed, I will communicate to the outcome of this order to council members, the administration, and to the public. This is my report for tonight, and I'm open for any question that you may have. Thank you. Okay, thank you, uh, Maria. Uh, council members, any comments or questions for the auditor this evening? All right, if not, again, thank you, Maria, for the report. Thank you. And uh, we will continue to move along here this evening. Uh, we have uh, with us this evening, um, I don't think we have C. We have a report from the police and 
fire some yes. boards. Is Steve with us? Yes, Steve is connected via telephone. And we have Craig as well, right? Yep. Right, I'm so we'll I'm turn it over to Steve, Steve and Craig, if you could give us a, a good high level overview of how things are going and um, we'd appreciate that. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, the uh, police and fire civil service boards have been pretty busy over the last uh, uh, year, even though COVID was in effect. Uh, at this time, uh, our fire entry level position uh, list will expire on December uh, 21. The second deputy position expires in October of 22. EMS lieutenant expires on October of 22 and fire lieutenant prevention, training, and suppression expires in October of 22. Police entry expires uh, 921 of this year. Uh, captain expires 621. Sergeant expires 722. And lieutenant expires 622. We are currently uh, uh, testing for um, police entry level, the uh, Nelson Denny written test will be conducted on May 15th of this month of May. Uh, physical agility test will occur on June 5th of 2021. And the oral interviews will take place on June 25th of 2021. The Spanish uh, proficiency examinations will occur on the 28th of June. Uh, backgrounds will take place in July. And then conditional offers uh, of employment will be extended in September, hopefully after the uh, uh, Civil Service Board has a chance to review the, uh, all the uh, uh, testing materials. Uh, psychological examinations uh, and a final offer of extension or uh, uh, of uh, employment will occur in November of 2021. So uh, things are moving along pretty, uh, pretty well. Uh, we've had great cooperation be between the civil service boards and the um, and the uh, departments, uh, and we're working on some things uh, going forward. Obviously, uh, the previous uh, uh, gentleman, Mr. Ramirez, had talked about education and things that the chief has proposed, and the civil service board for the police has considered that. Uh, I know Councilperson uh, Cepeda had some questions that I saw that were answered by the chief, and if she has any questions for me or any other members of council, I'll be glad to answer them. Okay, uh, thank Hello? you, Steve. Yeah, yep. comment or question, council members? Johanny. Hi, thank you for your presentation. Um, I did have questions more related to uh, the current status of our police department and the percentages or number of um, current officers with college um, and the role that that plays in, in promotional for promotional purposes. Also, as I was reading the code of ordinances, chapter 77 for, regarding the police department, um, where um, it elaborates on how an officer becomes uh, eligible to take the exam to be promoted a sergeant. And it, and it reads um, uh, that the civil service board shall select the type of testing, set the weights of all parts of the testing process and conduct an examination process. When it says select the type of testing, is it different um, for each position that an officer is uh, examining to be promoted to? Well, uh, let me answer your last question first, if I may, Councilperson. Uh, the, what happens is for promotional testings, uh, generally there is a uh, limit, uh, there's a time and service requirement. So it might be three years for sergeant, five years total as a sergeant uh, to become a lieutenant, et cetera, and then different levels for captain. But uh, the, uh, there's always a written and an oral uh, component in promotional tests. The difference that the civil service sometimes uses is they'll weight an oral interview higher than a uh, written examination. And sometimes that's done because they believe that oral examinations are a better indicator of the person's qualifications for promotion. Uh, and it, it, and then there is a college uh, credit component in promotion as it stands now, uh, and that can affect how people 
end up on the promotional list as well. Because if you had two equal candidates on oral and written, if the one candidate has college credits, that could boost their standing or rank on the promotional list. But just for clarity, in order for any officer to qualify or to be eligible to take an exam, they need at least five years of experience to be promoted to sergeant or to take the exam to be promoted. And then all the other I, items get factored in. Is that correct? Well, I believe it's three years for sergeant now, ma'am. Yeah, I'm looking at, and I don't know if this has been updated, but I printed it out today. Um, And I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but I believe it's three years as a patrolman to take the sergeant's exam, ma'am. Oh, see, it doesn't specify. It just says, yeah. uh, must be sworn in member of the Reading Department of Police with five years experience, who shall have well, a then, required five well, years experience. Prior yeah, to well, Steve. Then, it, then, yeah. then it's five. Is that Chief Tornelli? Yeah, Steve, that got, that got changed. Remember, we had that standard was changed at one point in time when we had a very young workforce that we had individuals right. who didn't qualify and then it got changed back to the original, which was the five years. Okay. Then, then, it, then it is five. Yeah. All right. I just go ahead, Johnny. So almost, no, anybody else? Yeah, I got a question. Go ahead, Strat. The promotion to detective, how is that determined? Uh, I believe detectives are appointed by the chief, if if I'm not mistaken. Is that right, Chief Tornelli? Yes, that's correct. I make those appointments. Additional questions, anyone? Uh, yes, Jeff, I do. Um, Go ahead I had a great conversation earlier with the chief. It really brought um, some awareness um, that I, I hadn't had prior um, to the process. And so I appreciate that. In that conversation, um, you know, I started to understand a little bit more how, how, the, um, how the process works and, and where the point systems are, you know, um, evaluating the individual. And um, I understand that it's one point uh, per, you know, educational credit, you know, credit that this individual has. Um, however, there are no um, points given at this time uh, to certifications that current officers might be receiving um, that are certificate based programs that the chief had uh, mentioned uh, in our last meeting. Um, certificate programs at Penn State um, and elsewhere um, that, you know, with the state police that are accredited certificate programs. I wonder if that could be a consideration of, um, you know, the civil service board uh, to take, you know, if, if there's possibility to give a valuation to those certificates achieved that are encouraged by the city for our current staff uh, to attain. Right. So, uh, so the, the answer is yes. Uh, however, the civil service board with respect to promotions really makes recommendations to city council because city council must promulgate ordinances regarding promotion. Entry level is solely within the purview of the civil service board. So uh, that's why we're having these conversations now about some of the suggestions that were brought forth by Chief Tornelli and his liaisons uh, to the Civil Service Board about getting rid of college credits to try to give people that haven't had the opportunity to have college but have all the other uh, credentials to be promoted uh, that they would be on a level playing field. So, but yes, certainly certifications can come in there. There's all kinds of things that can come in there. In fact, uh, you know, for the entry level, we have a, a Spanish uh, language component, which uh, most cities don't have. So, um, so yeah, th there's, there's a lot of things that can be looked at. So Steve, it's my understanding also that, you know, the city of Reading as an entity does not provide um, educational, um, you know, opportunity as, you know, other entities do, you know, so opportunities for advancement, tuition reimbursement, those types of things. So any officer who is with the city of Reading currently, you know, would have to be paying out of pocket to obtain, uh, you know, 
future futuring their education and that is more of an administrative um you know issue um not not the you know police or specifically the the board um however i think that where the city does encourage and what i've heard um is you know officers to partake in those other programs that are certificate based maybe that's where we could bring um value or merit to the programs that are being encouraged and they are taking um, as professional development. Um, the, the other thing I wondered is that there is a quarter of a percent of a point um, earned for each year of experience on the force. Is that correct? correct. Okay. Yeah. And how is that a standard with other municipalities? Is, is that kind of what, with with other third class cities, it's very standard. It is, and is that yes. something the board had taken into consideration, where possibly increasing the the uh, valuation of that you know quarter percent for a year to maybe half you know a per, you know it, instead of decreasing the value of an educational credit, increasing the value of um, you know, your, your longevity, uh, on the force right. was, was that taken in consideration? No, it hasn't been changed in 30 years, ma'am. And uh, if, if that's something that city council would like the, uh, civil service commission to look at, that certainly can be looked at and discussed. But again, the promotion, the promotional, uh, uh, uh items are done by ordinance. So, uh, we can recommend it. And if that's something that you guys want to do, you can do it. So I hear you loud and clear. And I think those are two areas that caught my attention today and being kind of thoughtful around, um, you know, this dialogue in which, you know, I can work towards um, looking at an ordinance, knowing that the board is open to that and working with us. But we really do want right. to support and find the best people uh, for these positions um, for our city. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. All right. Um, Johanny again. Go ahead, Johanny. So just for clarity, and this is uh, not, not only to you, uh, Mr. Price, but also to council president. So that means we have the power to add ordinances, uh, additional requirements, because I'd be interested in seeing uh, someone get points for actually living in the city of Reading. I don't know if that's possible, but I didn't realize we had the power to actually add uh, more to this component. I, I, I didn't yes. know. So well, you obviously, for, um, for so, asking yeah. those questions. Yeah, since we're going so, through this process, yeah, but Steve, if you want to elaborate a little further. Um, go well, ahead. I think rather than do it by Zoom, uh, uh, Council Person Cepeda, if you'd like me to meet with you and I could go over and prepare a memo to distribute to Council about all your options, I'll be glad to do that. We used to have a residency component for entry level for the fire department which was to hope to get more city residents to be firefighters. And um, that was dropped uh, years ago because it didn't generate more city residents being firefighters. We had people just rent apartments uh, for the year prior to the fire test. And then uh, uh, as soon as they were hired, they would leave the city. But yeah, there's, there's all kinds of options. You can give bonus credits on entry level. If you're, if you're a city resident, you can, you can, you can be creative. Jeff, okay. this is Marcia. Uh, Marcia? Yeah, and I think this is such a uh, in-depth discussion that we need to have. And rather than fragment, making it more fragmented, I think it would be better as, as a body, we all think about what we would look at as being priorities and have a good group discussion on this. And we'll, this is actually on the agenda for later on. But I really believe that it's timely now that a lot of us have done a lot of good research, probably are learning more as we do that. So let's have the discussion that we need to do and really we look at something that we really haven't examined for quite a few years. And it's so important now in this time and place. And not only for the police, but also for the fire, too. I think we need to look at it in the same way. Yeah, it's a good point, Marcia and, and Johanny. I think we, maybe we can invite Steve and the chief to a, a, a very near future community the whole meeting and have a discussion about what the options are, understanding that, you know, some of these things have been wrung out before and maybe some of them have not. So the time for review. Uh, 
Anything I'll make do? myself available, and I know the chief will probably do as well. Yeah, anything yeah. we can do to improve the process and make it as fair as possible, I think, is important. Any other comments or questions? Okay. All right. Thank any you. Any comments, sir? Have a good night. Be safe. Before you go, Craig, did you have any comments, sir? No. We didn't give him a chance. Uh, no, not particularly. I think Steve covered um, the, the majority of the items. Um, we do appreciate the opportunity um, to communicate with council about their needs and about their concerns with regard to the, uh, the fire department and providing fire and EMS services. I would note um, the council, the one concern that both Chairman Leifer and myself have is the absolute um, dearth of applicants we receive from the city overall. When we tested last uh, uh, last summer, we had, I believe the number was around 115 of which um, far less than 10%, than closer to 5%, I believe, were city residents. And as a matter of fact, the vast majority were not even Berks County residents. Um, we had a, a huge number of people coming from outside. So anything we can do to encourage um, or th that in your travels, when you meet with your constituents, that we can encourage to get uh, folks, not only um, as members of the department, but also, um, and I know this is not limited to the Fire Civil Service Board, uh, but we've been running on a, with two of um, a three person board for the last two years because we've not been able to recruit anybody as the third person. So if one of us is sick, then there's, we're not having a meeting um, and getting work done. Um, and it's going to get a little bit busier uh, as we go into the entry level testing and the, uh, uh, both the, the, the written testing, follow up uh, physical testing. So that's that's usually our bread and butter for the year uh, and uh, working with the department to try and make sure that they've got a complement of folks that when there's a vacancy, they can fill them and stay at full strength to protect the, the residents of the city and the surrounding area. So that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Well, Craig and Steve, thank you both. Um, you know, public safety is our number one responsibility in the city. We always emphasize that and anything we can do um, to make the process fair to everyone and inclusive and strengthen both organizations, it's a priority. So we appreciate your service and your effort. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Yep. Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. All right. Thank you guys. All right. We're going to move on council um, to, uh, Ordinances for final passage. The first ordinance this evening is bill number 30-2021, amending the 2021 position ordinance by reassigning two police officers from the patrol division to the criminal investigation division who will be assigned to the state police auto task force that is fully funded by the Pennsylvania State Police Auto Theft Task Force. This was introduced at the April 12th uh, regular meeting. Is there a motion please? So moved. Second. Okay, been properly moved and seconded. Chief, did you want to give us just a, a just kind of a brief recap of this ordinance, please? Yes, still it's just uh, just a little bit of housekeeping when it comes to the position ordinance. These positions have been in the investigations division since 2004, and they were just never moved uh, in the position ordinance uh, until this time. Great. Okay, thank you, Chief. All right, uh, any other comments? Okay, if not, Linda, can we have a uh, roll call, please? Motion was made by Councillor Goodman Hendershed, seconded by Councillor Cepeda Freitas to enact bill number 30, 2021, which amends the 2021 position ordinance by reassigning two police officers from patrol to criminal investigation as assigned to the state police auto task force. Ms. Cepeda Freitas. Yes. Ms. Gibbon Hendershitz? Yes. Mr. Marmaru? Yes. Ms. Reed? Yes. Ms. Sahelnik? Yes. Ms. Ventura? Yes. Mr. Waltman, President? Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. Our next ordinance is Bill Number 31 2021. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amending the City Code Chapter 77, Part 1. Police Department by amending the experience requirements for the position of captain, 
and striking section 110 college credits for sergeant, lieutenant and captain and reserving that section. This was introduced at the April 12th regular meeting. Is there a motion please? Motion Move to table. Second. Okay, it's been properly moved and seconded. It's a table motion, so there's no discussion. Um, Linda, can we have a roll call please? Motion was made by Councillor Cepeda Freitas, seconded by Councillor Goodman Hendershitz to table bill number 31, 2021. Ms. Goodman Hendershitz. Yes. Mr. Marmaru? Yes. Ms. Reed? Yes. Ms. Sahelnik? Yes. Ms. Ventura? No. Ms. Cepeda Freitas? Yes. Mr. Waltman, President? Yes. Six yeas, one nay. All right, the next ordinance is bill number 32-2021, authorizing the agreement of sale for 313A South 8th Street for $600 after the city followed its purchasing policy by notifying the surrounding neighbors of the property that the property was available for bid. This was introduced at the April 12th regular meeting. Is there a motion, please? So moved. Second. It's been properly moved and seconded. Um, Linda, I'm sorry, are there any comments? I apologize. All right, it's pretty self-explanatory. Linda, can you or the cat give us a roll call, please? A motion was made by Councillor Marmaru, seconded by Councillor Sahelnik to enact bill number 32, 2021, which authorizes the agreement of sale for 313A South 8th Street for $600 to an adjoining property owner. Mr. Marmaru. Yes. Ms. Reed. Yes. Ms. Helmet. Yes. Ms. Ventura. Yes. Ms. Peter Freitas. Yes. Ms. Goodman Hendershitz. Yes. Mr. Waltman, President. Yes. <laughs> Seven yeas, no nays. Okay, um, the final ordinance for passage this evening is bill number 33-2021, uh, and that is authorizing the agreement of sale for, 400, uh, for 423 Scoople Avenue to the Reading Parking Authority for $25,000. This was introduced at the April 12th regular meeting. Is there a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. All right, it's been properly moved and seconded. Any comments, Donna? I'm so glad to see this happen. When I sat on Parking Authority in 2009, I was hoping this would happen. And here we are in 2021. So I guess all good things take a lot of time when governments and bureaucracies are involved, but this is good. I think this is really going to be helpful for the, for the residents of that area because parking is a real challenge in, in that area of Schuylkill Avenue. And hopefully it won't take a huge amount of work by the Parking Authority to render it uh, usable as quickly as possible. So I hope this is just the start of, of many of these, I'll call satellite residential lots that will happen throughout the city. So I'm very pleased about this. So I hope everyone okay. can support it. Additional comments, anyone? All right, I simply agree with Donna. I hope they can turn that lot into a, an asset for the neighborhood. It's an important part of the city and a lot of things going on over there. So hopefully we can, uh, we can capitalize on this sale. All right, if there are no other comments, uh, Linda, can we have a roll call, please? Motion was made by Councillor Reed, seconded by Councillor Sahelnik to adopt or enact bill number 33, 2021, which authorizes the agreement of sale for 423 Schuylkill Avenue to the parking authority for $25,000. Ms. Reed? Yes. Ms. Sahelnik? Yes. Ms. Ventura? Yes. Ms. Cepeda Freitas? Yes. yes. Ms. Goodman Hendershitz? Yes. Mr. Marmaru? Yes. Mr. Waltman, President? Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. Okay, we have uh, five ordinances for introduction. I'm going to ask that uh, Councilwoman Marcia Goodman Hendershitz to please read them on to the record. And just uh, patience on the part of my councilmates. I may be interrupted by dog barking and or a dirt bike that's racing outside my house right now. So it's pretty noisy neighborhood. Okay, A, 
ordinance amending the zoning map by moving 226 North 5th Street into the same zoning district as 230 North 5th Street, also known as the Medical Arts Building Property, into the same commercial C-C zoning district. As part of this project, both properties will be combined into a single parcel for commercial use in residential apartments. B, ordinance amending the zoning map by moving 654, 656, 658, and 660 Schuylkill Avenue into the same commercial neighborhood zoning district for a mixed use development. As part of this project, the properties will be combined into a single parcel for a convenience storage store slash restaurant, a barbershop, dwelling units, and a shared parking area. C, ordinance amending city chapter code 353, loitering, obstructing public places by renaming the chapter loitering and panhandling, creating, uh, replacing a diversionary program to be used to address aggressive panhandling or loitering when it's reported to the Reading Police Department and when police officers encounter it and eliminating the possibility of a prison sentence. D, ordinance authorizing the appropriation transfer of 40,634,003 cents from project number 31-01-03 general ledger number 01-00-00-2 9-9-0 fund balance to project number 31-01-03 under general ledger number 31-00- I'm sorry, dash 01-00-4510 general plant supplies in order to make the Samuel Pottinger trust donations available for use during the current fiscal year. And E, ordinance authorizing an amendment to the 2021 budget revenues reflecting the increase of 1,427,667 dollars in general fund revenue pursuant to the recently negotiated cooperation agreement with the Reading Parking Authority. That's it. Okay, thank you, Marcia. Um, we're gonna move on then to uh, Resolutions. The first resolution is authorizing the execution of the agreement between the city and Hope Rescue Mission to utilize Hope's clean team to clean and maintain the downtown area. Um, formerly serviced by the Downtown Improvement District Authority. Is there a motion, please? So moved. Second. I make a motion to amend. Yes. You have to enter the motion first before you can amend it. All right. So it's been it's been formally put on the table. Go ahead, Lucy. Okay. Do you have a motion to amend? Yes. Um, I'd like to amend the language. Uh, I believe that in our conversations, um, since the downtown improvement district authority is no longer in place, it should be removed or omitted. Um, any guidance by the solicitor is appreciated. Yeah, I cir circulated a amended resolution that also amended the um, ordinance to take out any language referencing the former authority. And I didn't see that, Fred, I'm sorry. Can you read what, what you recommended then? Or does yeah, anybody have that in front of them? I can pull it up. And does somebody second the amendment? Second. Joe Honey seconds it, okay. So, all right, um, so you're gonna pull it up, you said, Fred? Yeah, I can, I can read it. It'll say, be it resolved by the City of Reading City Council that the mayor is authorized to execute the agreement between the city and Hope Rescue Mission to utilize Hope's clean team to clean and maintain the downtown area in and around Penn Street from 2nd to 11th. A copy of the agreement is attached as Exhibit A, and then the agreement will be uh, uh, amended to strike the whereas clause that referenced the former authority. Thank you, Fred. Okay, is that sufficient, Lucy? Yes. All right. Uh, any other comments on the amendment? 
Okay, so first we're gonna vote on the amendment. Uh, Linda, can we have a roll call, please? Um, motion was made by Councillor Sahelnik, seconded by Councillor Cepeda Freitas to amend resolution 42 by removing the language pertaining to the former did authority and replacing that description with areas in the downtown on Penn Street from 2nd through 11th Street. Uh, Ms. Sahelnik? Yes. Ms. Ventura? Yeah. Ms. Cepeda Freitas? Yes. Ms. Goodman Hendershitz? Yes. Mr. Marmaru? Yes. Ms. Reed? Yes. Mr. Waltman, President? Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. All right, so the amendment has passed. Are there any comments uh, on the resolution itself before we vote on the amended resolution? Marcia? Yes, I think it's important to note that this is a partnership with the Hope Rescue Mission that will indeed help to empower those individuals who now reside at the residence to be a part of maintaining the beauty of the city. And that it is no way that we wanna look at it as us using a, in an advantageous way, people that are homeless. And indeed it's a way of helping them on their road to be able to rebuild themselves and be able to be integrated into the community. So I wanted to be able to frame it in a positive way so that the public knows that Hope Rescue Mission indeed its mission is to really to be able to help the betterment of those individuals who may need shelter at some point, but to get them back into the community. All right, additional comments? Okay, if not, uh, let yes. me- Yes, oh, oh I'm ahead. sorry. Um, it's not being able to raise my hand that is <laughs> holding me back tonight. Um, so I think what is really important um, from what Marcia said also is that the this agreement ensures that the individuals who um, are in partnership and performing, um, you know, as as this resolution reads, to clean and maintain, uh, you know, downtown, um, are being paid. Um, and I've invited the administration to speak to the rate in which they've chosen and where that funding will be coming from. Um, so that we're well aware um, that these individuals are, are not going to be currently continuing to volunteer after this agreement is, is passed. So I believe Frank, you wanted to speak towards sure. that? Sure, um, so, so I understand your question. You, you would like to know where the funding's coming to fund uh, the, the requirements of this agreement? And the rate that these individuals will be paid. Sure, okay. Well, I, I had to check from this uh, last meeting to now, I had to check with two sources. So the funding from this agreement is being charged to the original allocation that was originally committed to did for this year. You know, when we did the budget process for 2021, we allocated roughly $175,000 for did. Obviously that money now has become available for downtown initiatives. So those funds for the whole uh, rescue mission will be t uh, deducted, charged to, from the money we originally allocated for did. And in regards to the $15 an hour, that's a $15 an hour we're going directly to to Hope Rescue Mission. Um, I can't speak to directly actually how much gets into the hands of the participant or the, the person. I imagine, and I don't know this for sure, but there may be, it's sort of like when you pay an, an agency a certain fee, there may be some additional administrative costs that may be deducted. I don't know if it's a clear $15 handoff to the actual person doing the work. We're contracting with the organization who's getting the $15 an hour, if that helps. Yes, okay. that, that is helpful. Okay. okay. I'm Any additional comments? If not, Linda, can we have a, a motion, uh, a, a roll call, please, on the amended resolution? Motion was made by Councillor Goodman Hendershed, seconded by Councillor Sahelnik to adopt Bill Resolution 42 2021 as amended. Ms. Ventura? Ms. Cepeda yeah. Freitas? Oh, thank you. Ms. Cepeda yes. Freitas? Yes. Ms. Goodman Hendershed? Yes. Mr. Marmaru? Yes. Ms. Reed? Yes. Ms. Sahelnik? 
Yes. Mr. Waltman, President. Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. All right, um, our council, we have two resolutions. One's for the reappointment of Ann Sellers to the Env Environmental Advisory Council. And the second one is for the appointment of Ryan Yankochik to the Rec Commission. Is there any objection to moving them forward at the same time? If not, we need a motion, please. So moved. You got it. It's been properly moved and seconded. Any comments, Strat? Yes, we're fortunate to have people like Ann on this council, okay? She brings a lot of knowledge of what should be done in the city, and I know she's getting it done. In regards to Ryan, here's a man that's been involved in sports for the last, I don't know how many years. He's involved and he knows what he's doing, and he'll be a terrific addition to the rec board. Thank you. Okay, additional comments? All right, if, I'll go ahead, Marcia. Yes, and uh, first of all, I've been very pleased to be able to work closely with Ann Sellers in her role in the Environmental Advisory Council. And she brings such a high level of expertise that we really have an exemplary council because of her and the other members. So I'm glad that she wants to continue to take her time to serve. And Ryan is such an impressive, and I want to call him a young man from my age point of view, uh, but he really is, is very dynamic, did all of his homework to know what the Rec Commission actually might need, which is impressive. So I look forward to him joining us at, at our May meeting. Any other comments? All right, if not, Linda, can we have a roll call, please? Motion is made. By Councillor Cepeda Freitas, seconded by Councillor Marmaru, to adopt resolutions 44 and 45, 2021, which make reappointments and appointments to the city's commissions and councils. Ms. Cepeda Freitas? Yes. Ms. Goodman Hendershitz? Yes. Mr. Marmaru? Yes. Ms. Reed? Yes. Ms. Sahelnik? Yes. Ms. Ventura? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Waltman, President. Yes. Seven yeas, no nays. All right. Um, our final resolution this evening is approving the settlement of the federal lawsuit with the caption Gary Mogul versus City of Reading, case 218CV-01512, and the payment of the negotiated settlement amount. Is there a motion, please? So, so moved. moved. It's been properly moved and seconded. All right. Um, because of the legal uh, statute of this specific uh, legislation, um, if anyone has very, very limited comments, that, that would be fine, but very limited. I would recommend almost none. But any comments at this time? OK, uh, Linda, can we have a roll call, please? Motion was made by Councillor Sahelnik, seconded by Councillor Gubin Hendershitz to adopt Resolution 45 2021, uh, which authorizes the settlement of the federal lawsuit as, as the settlements negotiated by legal counsel. Ms. Gubin Hendershitz? Yes. Mr. Marmaru? Yes. Ms. Reed? No. Ms. Sahelnik? Yes. Ms. Ventura? No. Ms. Cepeda Freitas? No. Mr. Waltman, President? No. Three yeas, four nays. The bill does not pass. Okay, uh, Council, that brings us to our final order of business this evening. That would be uh, Council comments. Um, who would like to uh, start off this evening? I would. Go ahead, Strap. Okay, now you, all of you have heard me for the last several weeks now talking about going back into council chambers. I have talked to the com community and they said they want to be able to come in there and confront us when issues are brought up instead of trying to get zoomed in on the television and everything else. And I think we reached the point now you know, every other big organization is meeting. 
We only have 12 people that sit up there, and maybe the maximum, maximum, unless we have a big project of a dozen people sitting in the audience. Is there a problem with this? Don't we want to go in there? Another thing, like tonight now, no reflection on animals. We're talking about animals barking outside of the house. We're talking about, we see on the screen, an animal on the screen there. You know, this is not, this is not a, a meeting. This is not a meeting. We need to get together and sit down and let the people come in and confront us, okay? Thank you. Okay, additional comments? Johanny? Yes, well, again, I just want to reemphasize a, a thank you to everyone who spoke at tonight's meeting and to encourage our community to use this forum to continue voicing concerns, comments, suggestions, recommendations. Obviously, it takes a collective to be able to make improvements in our city and our community. Um, I, I also want to make a request to the administration that for the upcoming exam for the police uh, department, I think the exam is in May, if I heard correctly, that we do maybe a, a, an attempt, I don't know if robocall is the answer because I know we had some complaints about the abundance in, in those phone calls, but I think we need to let our community know um, that this exam is, is up and coming. I also want to make another request that we really develop a strategic plan of recruitment effort so that we can continue diversifying all of our departments, boards, commissions, and authorities. Because I know that when we've interviewed for different uh, authorities and commissions that that topic always comes up, the issue of, of diversity. So I think it's time to have some type of um, recruit, recruitment or marketing tool, marketing plan in place to make sure that we're making people aware uh, of what's available and encouraging and enabling them to apply. And, and that's about it, so thank you. And also on, on Strat's comment, I, I would be interested also in learning from the administration what our um, plans are as it as it relates to COVID as far as reopening is are there protocols in place what what is the tentative date if that is going to happen like when will City Hall be open for the public because I know there are a lot of people that are asking these questions so thank you Marcia yeah and I will be following up on uh, Councilman Marmaru's statement I understand the frustration. We've all been uh, going through an unprecedented pandemic and we're still not at the end of the tunnel here. I do believe we need to rely on the medical or the uh, public health device or advice, I should say, that comes from Jeremy Surfus, who will be directing the administration and also as his council as far as proper protocol. And we need to follow that. And as much as uh, this has been challenged, I think we've all been elected to role to be challenged and to learn to adapt. And I wanna thank the public who's done an excellent job of being able to do that, joining us when they can on the Zoom meetings, giving us uh, their uh, opinions in writing. We certainly, I think, have had actually more engagement of the public through our Facebook Live. If you look at the comments that have come there, people are looking for opportunities. So right now we're in the process and I wanna thank the administration for doing a yeoman's job and being able to make uh, vaccinations available for our citizens. So we are doing a great job, but it's only been within the last week that the vaccinations have been opened up to the entire public. I apologize for my home environment. I cannot control the barking of my dogs when there's outside distractions. I cannot control the fact that I have dirt bikes riding past my home, but we all make adjustments that we need to, and that's how we do good governance. So on that note, I am sure we'll hear something back from the administration. And what I'd like to do is put out a friendly challenge to my fellow council members that we all outreach to as many of our constituents as possible to direct them to where there's vaccinations available. Because as much as we might know about it through Facebook to whatever, some people don't have access 
to those resources. So I think we can continue to need to do that. And I know uh, I've been able to get people to move from being hesitant to being ready to be vaccinated. So that's what's really important. Okay. The other, and this is a very positive thing. If you notice, I have a cherry tree behind me. That's what's up at the pagoda in full bloom right now. But something else good's going to be happening at the pagoda. We're going to be having the pagoda skyline together with the foundation, having a gift shop sale. It's going to be an outdoor sale, uh, just like we had over the holiday season, following social distancing. So there will be no one allowed in the building. Everything will be conducted outside the building. We will be asking people to wear face masks. There'll be people that will be monitoring that. So you will not be able to stand in line if you do not have a face mask and do not keep social distancing. But it's gonna be occurring on May the 8th uh, from 11 uh, to three o'clock. And it's right before Mother's Day. So I know some people are interested in getting some of the things that Pagoda Skyline Gift Shop has for sale. And that's gonna be a good way to be able to do it. And I'd also like to ask for anyone that is visiting any of our parks and playgrounds, please still observe uh, the social distancing that's necessary. Okay, just because we're outdoors doesn't mean need, that we don't need to wear face masks and just protect ourselves. We've been able to keep this pandemic under control because we've been good, but we still need to hang in there as long as necessary. So thank you. Okay, Marcia, thank you. Uh, additional comments, Donna? Yeah, I just wanna thank everybody who came out to help clean up on, on um, Saturday. Um, I'm not sure throughout the city if our numbers were as high as they have been um, other times, but certainly the folks that I encountered were certainly doing really good work. Um, Center Park, I saw a whole contingent of folks there in Center Park as I, as I went over to uh, Pope Lutheran at Front and Greenwich, and I appreciate everyone who showed up there and the efforts of Emily Wolf and, and the folks in the congregation and neighbors there. Um, the, the, the lot, which many of you remember in a 600 block of North Front is really getting cleaned up and we're starting to see some raised beds there. And that is going to be a real community asset to, to the folks in that part of Northwest Reading and the efforts of everyone at, at Hope Lutheran and Cafe Esperanza, which is a part of Hope Lutheran. It's a really transformative time for that section of the city. And it's, it's, it's just so encouraging to see these, have, these things happen. I know throughout many parts of the city, we're seeing similar things. And um, it's, you know, we're, I think we're at a tipping point to some degree of, of moving forward, um, despite all those folks who, who might feel that it's otherwise. I, I certainly feel as a resident of the city that things are, things are improving and, and we're on, on our way to a, a sort of a renaissance going forward. So I wanna thank everyone who plays a role. And again, I. You know, I don't have a hat, but if I did, I would be tipping it to Frank. Frank, you're, you're a blessing for us to have. Thank you, thank you for always being here, staying through all these meetings, helping to coordinate all these meetings and being available to us. I just sincerely mm -hmm. need all that. So thank you, Frank. Okay, um, next, who, who has any comments? Lucine has her hand up. I have yeah. my hand up, thanks. <laughs> um, nice. So, First, um, I, I want to, I don't remember all the names of those who spoke at the beginning of our meeting, but I think it was Ziomara, Ziomara. And I just want to um, address what she said. And I wanna thank her because it takes a tremendous amount of courage to speak and to speak publicly on behalf of, of your personal experiences as she did. Um, and I believe that there is valuable insight there. Um, you know, if she's willing to uh, work with our city, you know, possibly through maybe the diversity board or if there is another board or commission um, that would make sense um, to, you know, perhaps with Cindy um, to give insight in, into uh, an area in which some of us may have never even thought about or experienced. You know, we, we may have been coming from a place of privilege to never um, have been thinking about being homeless or having to make that decision. Um, so I just wanna thank her for that. And um, thank 
individuals who continue to support our meetings with public comment and conversations and submissions, even though it is more challenging to some um, to do that in this meeting form, you know, it's appreciated. Um, and it's very insightful to us um, and encourages us to keep doing what we do uh, because um, that is our job. And I think along, you know, those, those measures, it, you know, as fellow counselors are talking about is to continue to, to be speaking positively of our city, of our people, of ourselves, of the good things that are happening. Um, certainly there are things that happen that are unfortunate, um, but we can't let those continue to outweigh the good um, that is occurring, that we are seeing, um, the responses, I would like to just recognize, um, it was brought to my attention this weekend that West Reading uh, came over and supported some of our great American cleanup along the Riverside, which is exceptional. So thank you for doing that um, as, as a neighboring um, municipality. And, um, you know, the, the buyback programs, the paving, the gardens, our communities, you know, um, this is all positive. Uh, in fact, earlier today, I posted a picture of my nephew. That's right, I'm finally an aunt. And I uh, gave my nephew a beautiful gift of a bib that has the pagoda on it. And even though he lives in Philadelphia, he proudly wears that bib at three months old. He doesn't have a choice. Um, you know, these are all little things that we can be doing every single day to spread that positive message and branding about our city of Reading. So I encourage you to do that and to do it mindfully in everything that you do. And I hope that you enjoy this weather. And a question for the administration. I'd like to know the plans for Memorial Day and the opening for the pool. So as soon as you have that, I will be first in line um, in my bathing suit and ready to jump in. <laughs> so I look forward to hearing about that coming soon. Thank you. All right, thank you, Lucine. Additional comments, Marcia? Yeah, and I really apologize for this, but the Great American Cleanup was so fabulous this year. And I always need to shout out because people don't always know that uh, the folks that sponsor the Dure Hill Climb, the Blue Mountain Racing Club, the uh, Corvette Club, they cleaned up together with Public Works the whole of Dure Drive, starting down uh, from City Park all the way up, cutting down trees, going on the mountainside, pulling off the trash. And it was somewhat discouraging in that they said that this was the uh, worst that they've ever seen it as far as the amount of trash. So that says something about we, what we need to do. But I do want to reach out to the administration. And you know, I know we've had some dialogue. Those folks have sponsored an event uh, for I don't know how many years, but it's been decades where they have the Dure Hill Climb. And I hope sometime by the end of the summer, well, before the end of the summer, we need to let them know what's going to be happening with the Hill Climb and how we plan around that. It is a spectacular event for the city, has a lot of history to it. So I will be working and communicating with the mayor's office. I know, Frank, you're always on top of everything. So I know you're the go-to person when I need to get some clarity. But you know, this is a real important, and I think we need to be able to be very, very consistent how we open up events. Lucene talked about the pool. There's other groups that want to use uh, City Park. We need to be really clear and consistent as we see these changes in COVID, how we're going to be doing the uh, public event part of it with the city, because people are looking forward to that, but they want clear direction too. So thank you. All right, additional comments? Make an additional comment. Go ahead, Stra. Uh, I was out Saturday on Greenwood Street, and I was amazed to see the people bringing in these weapons. If that's only a handful of what I think is out there, we got to watch ourselves. <laughs> we believe we have to watch ourselves. And the people that were bringing these weapons in, these are the good citizens of Reading. I guess they don't want them in the house in case there's a break-in and somebody grabs them and they end up in the hands of people that shouldn't have any weapons. But again, I want to thank all these people that brought these weapons in this past Saturday. Thank you. Okay, any additional comments? 
All right, um, real quickly, our meeting schedule is as follows. Oh, man, Monday, May 3rd, uh, nominations and appointment committee at four o'clock, that's next Monday. And the committee, the whole meeting and including a zoning amendment public hearing is at five o'clock. The following Monday, May 10th, we'll have a committee of the whole meeting at five and it'll be immediately followed by our next regular business meeting. Um, if there is no additional business this evening, I simply need a motion to adjourn. You got it. Thank you, everyone. Have a, have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you.